My background is political economy. I've had as much economics as politics. And I've spent a lot of time working on policy issues as they relate to agriculture. However, what I'm going to be talking about is so serious and controversial that we don't dare leave it to the political economists. And we certainly don't dare leave it to the academy, to the professors. It needs all of us to pay attention to and to debate because there's no answer. There's no easy answer. So I know all of you here are environmentalists because I heard what you're involved in. Who here is in, has, is in the field of finance or has been in the field of finance? Anyone? Okay. Uh, technology. Various kinds of technology. Okay. Um, how about economics? Anyone? Okay. Um, the legal, legal and lawyers in the area. Okay. And of course, education, social science. Excellent. Thank you. And what I'm saying is that I am here as a catalyst, not as an expert. I have spent time, I've mainly lived in southern Africa, which is um, a region of 16 countries. I know nothing about the rest of Africa, but I have spent um, over 10 years living and working in southern Africa. But I'm not an expert. I'm here as a catalyst to get us all to debate these extremely important issues about biodiversity, agriculture, and sustainability. The other <coughs> comment I would like to make, which you will find, is I'm bringing you messages of good news and incredible lessons from the continent of Africa. Because most often, we hear nothing but horror stories about Africa. And what I'll be talking about are good news and messages coming from the continent. And I'll be going into that. What I would like to do is spend a few minutes, and I will leave plenty of time for discussion, on the issue of biopiracy. I will start with what is it, what's the definition, what's the analysis. Second, why should we worry about it, sitting in Sedona, or Flagstaff, or the United States of America. And then third, I will use the southern African part of the African continent to talk about resistance to some of the problems that are being introduced by biopiracy. But as Steve mentioned, it is an issue that is not limited to Africa. It is an issue that, that affects very much Native American peoples, the Wallapai, the Pai peoples in this part of Arizona, certainly the Hopi, the Navajo, and I'll be talking about the Anishinaabe people in Minnesota. So it's a worldwide issue my experience that I can share with you relates to Southern Africa. We have to start first with the history of agriculture, which I know you know, and I'm really glad you're having the film on food. That's excellent. The history of agriculture for 7,000 years is sharing. Sharing of seed, sharing of plants, sharing of resources. It is a history that brings us the biodiversity that we have today. All of us are dependent on that history of agriculture. We would not have the biodiversity, the many, many varieties of potatoes, of maize, of corn, of soya, if it hadn't been sharing. Another quick point about seed and agriculture is seed is very, very different from almost all other commodities. Seed will reproduce itself freely, as you know, in your gardens. It's very much fun to retain your seed for one season and replant it in the next. Nature reproduces seed freely. Probably more peculiar is that seed is con conserved by use. If we use the seed, we are honoring it, we recognize it, we name it, we conserve it. One of the huge problems with the loss of indigenous peoples and indigenous languages around the world, which is happening at a very rapid rate, is we also lose their knowledge, their naming of their plants. So if we use the seed, we conserve it. And furthermore, nature is such, gives us such a gift that if we use the seed, it increases 
It's not a commodity that wears out. It's not a commodity that diminishes by use. It increases by use. So I wanted to remind us, because we all know this, about these characteristics of seed as I go into the problems of biopiracy and genetically modified organisms. So let me start with what is biopiracy? And it's very easy to understand what it is. All you have to do is remember Hollywood, and the pirates do loot and pillage and steal. So biopiracy, one aspect of it, is the taking of seed and the looting of seed from other peoples. And I'll go into why that's a problem if seed freely reproduces itself. But the second aspect of piracy also is, as you've seen in the movies, <coughs> the pirates will burn what they can't carry away. So it's the stealing and the looting along with the destruction of a resource or of whatever the pirates leave behind. So it's two aspects uh, for biopiracy. I want to spend a few minutes giving you some examples of what I'm talking about. Some of them are very much um, from um, historical uh, events, historical purposes. First, let me reiterate, this is the summary of what I was saying about the history of agriculture. This is, if someone asks you for seed, you cannot refuse her. This has been the approach to food for 7,000 years. It's still the approach to food among indigenous peoples, not just on the African continent, but again among Native Americans. What the picture is, is of an amaranth. There are on this particular variety, 50,000 seeds on this one head. <laughs> Nature gives us bountiful gifts. We sitting in North America should have the amaranth is, uh, as our first primary major staple. The fact that we eat corn and potatoes and soya instead of amaranth has very much to do with biopiracy, 1500s, Cortez among the Aztecs. Because when Cortez arrived, he not only defeated the Aztecs militarily, but as a very good military st strategist, he also destroyed the amaranth, which was the basis of the culture of the Aztec. The amaranth is more nourishing than rice, maize, wheat. The amaranth will um, reproduce two or three times a year. It adapts itself from everything from Mexico City, where the Aztecs were, all the way to the northern parts of North America. It can be made into anything. It can be made into um, amaranth popcorn. It can be made into um, a flour, bread. Um, it certainly can be made like rice. And this particular variety doesn't show you, but a lot of the varieties have very, very, um, very good uh, I would say bountiful green leaves, and the leaves are as good as spinach. So this amaranth is such a gift to us, and the reason we don't even know about it, or we can get it in New Frontiers, if we look for it, is because of the history of biopiracy, starting with Cortez. A good military strategy, but we lost the gift of the amar amaranth to North America. So this particular example shows that biopiracy is not new. This is a contemporary um, illustration of biopiracy. This is wild rice in the lakes of Minnesota, and it is a sacred crop to the Anishinaabe people. They still very much harvest their wild rice, and they very much live off of it. Not too dissimilar from the amaranth, you can basically eat just wild rice and survive. It is so nutritious, okay? And the uh, Anishinaabe people did that, do that. What is now happening is that the University of Minnesota, the University of California, Berkeley, have freely harvested, because free sharing is the part of the cultures of sharing plants. Plants can reproduce themselves. So the scientists have gone in taken the many varieties. One lake this size could have 50 different kinds of wild rice, 50. 